On this episode of China Uncensored, China's next financial crisis is lurking in the shadows of shadow banking. It's like China stacked up $9 trillion on the edge of a cliff. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Matt Ganesda. I'm in today for Chris Chappell, who's on vacation, possibly in the South China Sea. Today, we're going to talk about shadow banking. It's like the evil twin of regular banking. Shadow banking involves lots of money and lots of risk, and it's tied to China's crazy investment boom. China's economic boom and its reliance on shadow banking is similar in some ways to the U.S. economic boom in 2007. Remember, a lot of great things happened in 2007. Apple released the iPhone 1. The last Harry Potter book was published, which Chris still has not read. And the U.S. economy had its last good year because then this happened. Stocks all around the world are tanking because of the crisis on Wall Street. The stock market is now down 21%. We have Armageddon. In the fixed income markets, we have Armageddon. No, but that's not what We have Armageddon. Armageddon, thanks Jim Cramer, happened after the failure of a single investment bank had a domino effect on the entire global financial system. Trillions of dollars were lost, and so were millions of jobs. Well, it's been 10 years since then. These guys have recovered, but these guys, not so much. But now the same kind of boom and crash could happen in China, and for the same reason. As Bloomberg puts it, China is playing a $9 trillion game of chicken called shadow banking. And like a game of chicken, some investors will get out just in the nick of time, but others will plunge off the cliff, bursting into a ball of flames on the rocks below. So what is this totally legit and trustworthy sounding shadow banking? To put it simply, shadow banking is when banks, or companies that are not banks, lend money outside of the normal structure of bank deposits and loans. Here's a simplified explanation. In the traditional banking system, if a business owner wants to grow his business, he goes to a bank, and that bank loans him money. Over time, he repays that money to the bank, plus interest. Let's say a single bank makes 100 loans. It's pretty careful about who it loans to, but even so, some of the businesses will fail. So Chinese regulations require that the bank set aside money to cover potential losses. But shadow banking operates outside that traditional system. Let's say 100 businesses want loans. A shadow bank packages those 100 potential loans into what's called a wealth management product. Then it goes to investors and is like, hey, buy our wealth management product. It has a high interest rate. When the businesses repay, the investors will get their investment back, plus a lot of interest. This is shadow banking. It can also get more complicated, because sometimes the bank isn't a bank, but just a regular company that packages investments. And sometimes the businesses that want to borrow money aren't regular businesses. They might even be a local government that wants money to build a bridge or whatever. All these things can be packaged into wealth management products or other types of financial products and then sold to investors or sold to investment companies, which then repackage them before selling them to individual investors. A lot of times, shadow bank loans get so complicated that no one understands exactly what the risk is. According to this article, the repackaging of credit is so complex that bankers often have to resort to line drawings that look like schematic plans for a Rube Goldberg device to explain to clients what's going on. A Rube Goldberg device, like when you pull a lever that sets a wheel in motion, that knocks down some dominoes, that ends up destroying the entire economy. But all this shadow banking and wealth management whatevers are so complicated. Investors don't want to know details. That's why companies involved in shadow banking put out feel-good ads like this. See, give us your money and you'll have sunshine in your heart. That bank, Everbright, is actually a legit commercial bank. It makes regular loans, too. But recently, it's also been selling a lot of shadow banking products to investors because that allows Everbright to maximize profit without putting so much of its own money on the line. Basically, it sells the risk to investors. But a lot of Chinese investors don't think risk matters that much 
because the Chinese government will probably bail everyone out if things go badly. Like the investor in this Bloomberg article who explains that the Chinese government would never let a big wealth management product fail because it's just not Chinese culture. Sounds like wishful thinking, right? But the Chinese government has bailed out banks in the past, like the $45 billion bailout in 2004. So assuming they'll do it again seems reasonable. Although if you've ever read the terms and conditions on any investment product ever, you've seen that past performance is no guarantee of future results. Sure, the Chinese government may have done a small $45 billion bailout in the past, but it doesn't want to do a $9 trillion bailout now. Besides, back then there was almost no shadow banking in China. It only started happening on a large scale after the global financial crisis 10 years ago. Authorities tried to stimulate China's economy by having banks lend more money. But soon, demand for borrowing got so high that banks didn't have enough money to lend to people. So banks started packaging loans and selling them to investors to get the cash. And it became such a big market, other companies that aren't even banks got into the game. According to a 2016 report, shadow bank loans now make up 57% of all loans in China. In other words, more than half of all lending in China now is actually done through shadow banking. And this is a big problem because shadow bank loans are usually a lot riskier than traditional loans. Once companies start packaging and repackaging, it's easy to lose track of what the risk actually is. It even starts to seem like a good idea, like jumping out of a plane without a parachute. The problem is, it only works if you're Keanu Reeves, dude. Oh, and there's another problem. Shadow banking loans don't get recorded on banks' balance sheets. That makes banks look healthier than they actually are, and that also increases the risk. And guess what? That's exactly what happened in the U.S. leading up to the 2007 crisis. Banks had been packaging and repackaging home loans, and then selling and reselling the packages, and eventually even the nerds at Lehman Brothers had no idea how to calculate the risk anymore. Shadow banking in the U.S. was the lever that set the global financial crisis in motion, and ironically, its domino effect is what led to the rise of shadow banking in China. And now, Chinese authorities are getting worried about what's coming next. In fact, Zhou Xiaochuan, the head of China's central bank, has openly warned that authorities need to curb financial risks that might lead to a Minsky moment, a sudden collapse of asset prices sparked by debt or currency pressures after a long period of growth. Basically, bad debt in shadow banking could end up wrecking the Chinese economy. And if the Chinese economy gets wrecked, it could lead to serious consequences for the Chinese Communist Party. You know, because no one believes in that communism stuff anymore, so they just tell people to go make money and don't talk about politics. But if people start losing their money on a massive scale, people might start talking about politics again. Like, who's to blame? That's why, at a top-level conference in July, Xi Jinping declared that financial security was vital to national security. National security is, of course, code for the CCP securing its power over the nation. But it's not 2007 anymore. It's 2018. We have iPhone Xs. Johnny Depp is a Harry Potter villain. And Chinese shadow banking has swelled to more than $9 trillion. The Chinese government can't afford to bail everyone out when things go south. They're trying to rein in shadow banking. But once you let the tiger out of the cage, well, it, uh, I guess it runs around and eats people. So what do you think of China shadow banking? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Matt Ganesta. Now it's time for that thing we do at the end. Ah, you're still here. Good. Don't worry, I haven't taken over China Uncensored. Chris will be back soon. In the meantime, if you like this show, we hope you can click on this orange button and support us by pledging a dollar or more per episode. We'll invest it in a Chinese wealth management product. Click here to go to our fundraising website, Patreon. 